Today, we're gonna go in depth about the neighborhood called the South Meadows. And the South Meadows entails sort of three different areas that people always talk about, which are Double Diamond Ranch, Damani Ranch, and Curdy Ranch. And they sort of run from north to south as you uh, were to drive through the South Meadows. For those of you that may not be fully aware, where this specifically is, is if you're coming from downtown and you are driving down 395 slash 580, you have three different off ramps, which would be South Meadows Parkway, Damani Ranch Parkway, and then you actually get off prior to Mount Rose Highway, but you can get off the freeway, it loops around and you come to the east side of South Virginia Street into Curdy Ranch. So it does sort of slope out a little bit, but that is the area we're talking about. For those of you that maybe search for homes on different internet sites, it's called Area 143. And when you're in that area, there's three major roads. You have Double R Boulevard, Double Diamond Boulevard, and Veterans Parkway that run sort of in the South Meadow. So it's kind of in that southeast corner of the Reno area, and it's very popular. When I first moved here 30 years ago, it wasn't even an area. There were just horses walking around down there and the freeway didn't even go that far. But now over the last 30 years, that area has been really built out. And as you go through those three areas, Double Diamond is typically the older homes and they sort of get newer as you go further south towards Curdy Ranch. But there are some pockets of Curdy Ranch where some of those homes have been there for quite some time. First, let's talk about real estate. Obviously, I'm a real estate agent. And what I want people to be aware of is if you're looking to move to or live in this area, there are quite a few different options. You can get a condo, you can get a single family home, you can buy luxury properties, there's 55 and over communities, and there are even lots of different options for rental property. But people always want to know, well, how much does it cost? And when you're looking in these South Reno areas, if you're on that east side of South Virginia, that side is definitely much more affordable than if you're on the west side of South Virginia. But let's talk about condos first. In this area, there's actually quite a few different options for condos. If you were to get off on South Meadows Parkway and go to Tanamera, that used to actually be an apartment complex when it first opened. And over the years, they converted it into a condo complex. So if you're looking for one bedroom and two bedroom condos that you can typically find stuff in the 400 on the smaller end. They get a little more expensive from there. Has a great pool and a clubhouse and it's a gated community, but there isn't like a person sitting at the gate. There's some really good options for condos in there. Then you have a couple of other options that are a little more expensive. And one of the complexes called Esplanade, which is in the Damani Ranch side, is actually a little bit newer. They're more of your classic kind of four, six, eight unit multi-story buildings that were built initially as condos. And again, it has a pool. That area does not have a big fancy clubhouse. You have Triana, which is an older complex, but similar as far as the way it lays out. They typically have pools. The HOA fees in there will be a little more expensive than in the Tanamera ones we talked about. If you're looking for more of a luxury condo, there's a complex called Florida Lee. Florida Lee is in the double diamond side of the South Meadows, and it is off of Wilbur May Parkway. It actually has a person at the gates when you come in, so that's the only one that has that. And then when you first drive in, there's a big roundabout. There's a really cool pool and gym and clubhouse, and it is more high-end. The units in there mostly are much bigger than some of these other complexes we're talking about, and the prices are higher. But all these condo complexes that we're talking about, typically you can get in between four 400 on the low end up to 800. Not many of them sell for more than six and 700,000. And if they do, it's definitely going to be in Florida Lee. So next let's talk about single family homes. And this is in my opinion, what that whole South Meadows double diamond area was originally built for. I actually had owned a home that we bought in the late nineties in double diamond back when there was only a couple hundred homes there. And you could literally buy stuff for a hundred bucks a square foot. But currently if you're looking to buy a house, say under $600,000, most of them are going to be 1600 square foot and under most of them are going to be in the older section of Double Diamond, and most of them are going to be, you know, three bedroom, two bath, two car garage on relatively small lots. I always say it looks like a Vegas style neighborhood because all the homes are typically stucco, tile roof, and all the lots are relatively the same. Lots of different builders that were in there, so it's not easy to say one builder did this or that. The prices will be a little bit all over the board on a price per square foot. Typically in this area, you're looking at kind of low $300 per square foot. It all depends on if they've done updates or deferred maintenance on things like appliances, electrical, plumbing, furniture is all those things now that typically are getting towards the end of their useful life. But even still, when we did this, there was only 22 listings for sale and they were half already accepted offers under contract and half that were still available. So there's not a ton of them that were for sale. But so far this year, at the time of shooting this video, there was almost 90 sales in that price point. So they do come up. There are things available that you can find under $600,000. So the next part of this whole South Minnesota area I like to talk about is a price point between six and $800,000. To me, this is kind of the wheelhouse and the best price point in this area area where you're going to find some really good homes. Typically, they're going to be more than 1,800 to 3,000 square foot range. And again, depending on their condition, prices are going to be all over the place. But at the time we did this, there were still 40 some homes for sale. And it's always been lately about 50-50 on what's under contract versus what's still available. There's been 114 sales so far this year up to that point. And the average price per square foot is a little bit lower than the ones under 600,000. And typically as homes get bigger, that average price per square foot will get a little bit smaller. But this is that wheelhouse that typically people are looking for that you can find a lot of 
really great homes from a lot of really great builders. Okay, and lastly, there are actually a, quite a bit of homes now that are $800,000 plus in this area. When I bought my first house down here that I literally paid $165,000 for, if you would have told me someday there was gonna be homes, 800,000, 900,000, and even now there was quite a few homes that are selling for a million plus, I would have said there's no way. And typically the ones that are getting more expensive are the 55 plus communities that are for the price per square foot rather expensive because Toll Brothers built them exclusively obviously for 55 plus people. And so they're nicely upgraded, they have good amenities, and usually they're in a complex that has pools and gyms and you know pickleball courts and all kinds of other features, which of course everybody in those groups is paying for. You have a master plan homeowners association. So everyone in here is paying at minimum one HOA fee, but then a lot of these communities have a second or even a third HOA fee. So you just gotta be careful of what the cost might be. A lot of these, again, that are over a million dollars are starting to get up on the hill above Damani Ranch High School. It's a lot of Toll Brothers high-end stuff and a lot of the houses are relatively big. For me, I don't know if I was looking to spend more than a million dollars that I would wanna be in the South Meadows, but it's becoming more and more popular. This whole group of homes over 800,000 so far this year has been almost 80 sales. And what's weird is usually on a price per square foot basis, as they get bigger, the average gets smaller. And in this case, it's the highest price per square foot in the whole South Meadows area are these high-end homes because they're nicely upgraded and the amenities are great and Toll Brothers built some really good houses. There are lots of options as far as what you can do in there. So if you're looking to rent, there's been a lot of luxury high-end apartments that are built all over the South Meadows. I'm not sure at this point if it makes more sense to see if you could find a single family home to rent in there or one of the ones I call a patio home that are on the really small lots that have a shared driveway. So there's not a lot of exterior maintenance to deal with if you were renting or you were an investor looking for a home to rent out to someone versus what it costs for these high-end luxury apartments. Now, the apartments typically have pools and some amenities that these single family homes may not have. I don't really think they're going to be a whole lot less expensive. It's just a matter for someone that maybe isn't quite sure that they're ready to buy a home. At least you can live in the South areas, go have your kids go to those schools and then figure out where you want to be long term while you rent to me, which should be a short term thing. Okay, so now that we kind of have an idea that you can buy anywhere between 400,000 up to a million plus in the South Meadows, one of the biggest reasons why people want to move to these areas, especially those people with younger kids, are the schools. So if you go all the way down to Curdy Ranch, there's an elementary school down there called Brown. Brown's an OG school, it's been there forever. And a few of the kids that would go to that school actually would not be zoned for the rest of the schools in the South Meadows. So you have to be careful if you get all the way down to Curdy Ranch and pay attention to what those school zonings are for middle school and high school. But the other three elementary schools, Double Diamond Elementary School, Polakitas, and the other brand new school that literally just opened this school year, John Raw, they're all relatively new. And I would love to talk to some of the parents now to see what the classroom sizes are and how things may have adjusted based upon the fact that now we have three elementary schools. When we first moved down there, Double Diamond Elementary School wasn't even there yet. So all three of these schools have been built in, in, in the last 20 years. And Polakitas and Raw literally are, one's brand new and the other one's maybe two or three years old. So they've done a good job building a lot of schools down there. All these schools funnel into DePoli Middle School, which is over on, again, the Double Diamond side. It's about 10-ish years old, basically brand new. Everything over there is amazing. There's a park right off of the back of it and it's right in the middle of that area. So that is where everyone in this area's kids will go to school. And then the high school is Damani Ranch High School, which is just, again, over on the Damani Ranch side. It's been their same thing about 10 years. When it first opened, they actually used it for a middle school and a high school for a few years while they were waiting to build the other school. But these are all really good schools, very popular schools. It's one of the biggest reasons why people move to these areas because they're conveniently located, easy to get to, and they're all relatively new. One of the other real cool things about living in the entire whole South Meadows area is was a huge master plan community. And what they did a really good job with is putting in walking paths and trails that are all over the area. And what's really cool is a lot of those walking paths and trails lead you right into the park system. I have a list here. There's six or seven parks. There's basically three in the Double Diamond side, three over in the Damani Ranch side. There's another one on Foothill near um, Brown Elementary School. So no matter where you live in the South Meadows, you are not going to be far to get into a park or be able to do things outside. And typically there's walking paths and trails that can get you to these properties. The other cool thing is there are walking paths on the main roads, but if you use these trails and other systems, then it's nice because you don't have to worry about trapping cars, especially if you have little kids. So if you go out in the evening, especially in the summertime, there'll be people riding bikes, pushing strollers. And it's actually a really cool setup if you live in those areas to be able to get outside and not have to worry about cars being a problem for you. Shopping and food is one of the other things we want to talk about today. And when I first moved down here again, I used to get off on South Meadows Parkway and there was legitimately a gas station and nothing else. And if you come through these areas now, there are a 
ton of options for you. And I sort of name each sort of strip mall shopping center based off the big tenant anchor store that is the grocery store. So if you come off South Meadows Parkway, just there on the left-hand side, there's the Sprout, I call it the Sprout Shopping Center. And there's all kinds of fast food options and things in there. And if you go just through the next traffic light on the right-hand side, there's a Smith's grocery store and there's all kinds of cool restaurants and food right there off the freeway. And it didn't used to be any of that kind of stuff. So you used to have to go out to other areas. Same thing, if you go one more exit on the freeway and you get off on Damani Ranch Parkway, the second again, Damani Ranch now, there's a Home Depot and I call it the Safeway Shopping Center. And it's right where RC Willie is and there's a really good restaurant, Twisted Fork, right there. But for those of you that live in those areas, if you come out on a South Virginia and you jump just outside what technically is called the South Meadows, you got the Summit Sierra Mall. On the other end off of South Meadows Parkway, you've got South Creek Pizza, Squeeze In, Yosha's Deli, Beer Envy. There's all kinds of stuff up and down those two areas. That Summit Mall, when they first did this outdoor mall in an area that gets cold in the winter, people were worried about it. But now you've got Land Ocean, which is a great steak restaurant. You've got BJ's, you've got Miguel's. So there's tons of options if you live in the South Meadows, actually in the South Meadows, and really short distance driving across South Virginia Parkway. No matter what you're looking for, high end, low end, fast food, something in the middle, there's something there for everybody. And it's really easy to get to all these different places. And then the last thing we wanted to mention about was what's called downtown Damani. So if you get off the freeway on Damani Ranch Parkway, and as you're making the loop around where you turn left into most of what's called Damani Ranch, if you were to go straight, and there's a traffic light there now, it dead ends relatively quickly. But there's a bunch of big luxury apartments being built on that corner. And if you get to the end of that street, that is where downtown Damani eventually is going to be. There's roughly 73 acres that are owned. And the plan is long term is for them to have more restaurants, more office space, all kinds of different things. But the thing that I can't quite grasp yet is how soon and how fast they're going to do it. I don't know from everything I've looked at, the condos and the apartments are going to be there relatively quickly, but the actual amenities and features and things that you see, they're going to be there eventually. Everything I've looked and read, it looks like more like 2025, but I'll keep an eye on that and keep things going. And as it starts to get built out, we'll do a video in the future specifically about downtown Damani, but it's going to be a really cool thing, a lot of good features, but it's going to extend out and make that Damani Ranch area a little bigger. As always, we really appreciate watching today's video. If you have specific questions on what you might be looking for, whether it's a condo, a home, 55 and over, something to rent, by all means, make a comment, reach out to us. We're easy to find. We appreciate watching all the videos. So if you're liking the content we're putting out there, of course, hit the subscribe button and we'd love to hear from you more about another area that you might be interested in hearing about. So we appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on another video coming soon.